Today we're going to do a full face of makeup that I personally regret purchasing for one reason or another. I actually got this video idea from Samantha March. She recently did this on her channel, so I'm going to link her channel and her video down below in the description box. I recommend checking her out if you haven't already. She creates some awesome content. So let's get stuck straight into this little video. Before we do, let's do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Now let's zoom in and look at all my makeup regrets. We're going to start with face makeup today. So the primer I regret purchasing is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. Now this is a great primer. It really is. I used to have the original, like the compact one, and I found that made me quite oily. And then I got a tester of this one and really quite liked it and decided to pick up the full size. But then I just, I shouldn't have because honestly it wasn't perfect for me, even though I like it. And I know for a lot of people, especially probably those of you with dry skin, this would work really amazing. But for me and my combo skin, it's just not quite perfect enough. And then I discovered the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer and I got them at the same time. And I just, you guys know that Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer is just such a holy grail primer for me. And what I should have done was tried the milk first. And then if I liked that better, just repurchased that instead of buying both of them as like at the same time, because this has really just moved to the back of my collection ever since I picked up that Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. And then obviously have discovered even better primers since then. So I really do regret picking the full size up of this. Even though it's a good product, it just doesn't get the love and attention it deserves in my collection. The foundation that I regret picking up and I'm kicking myself because I just kind of knew. Like when I first saw it get released, I was like, yes, I really want to try that. And it took like months and months to get released in Australia. I couldn't get it anywhere. And then I was like, no, you know what? I don't actually think this will probably work for me. Let me not get it. And then I had this super big moment of weakness and I just purchased it. And I don't quite know why, because I really did think that this wouldn't work for me. And it's not that this doesn't work for me. It's okay. Like, it's just okay. It's not super, super great. It's not super, super wow wowing. And I just kind of had the feeling that this would be the case. So this is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Karen Glow. I have the shade 105W, which is the lightest shade. The other thing is this shade range sucks um, because this is the lightest shade. So if you're any paler than me, and I'm certainly not the palest, these lights probably make me look even paler than probably what I really am in real life. Um, you won't have a shade for yourself because this is the lightest shade. It also has a fragrance in it, which I didn't realize. So I can't wear this for too, too long. I can like wear it one day and then I can't wear it like a second day in a row. Otherwise it will make my skin break out. But aside from that, let's just pretend that my skin didn't, doesn't mind fragrance. It's a crappy fragrance. It's so like florally and like toilet spray, spray florally, at least in my personal opinion. And they're like, I like sweet fruity candy type kind of scents or like woody earthy type scents. So I just don't super do florals and it's just, yeah. I mean, it looks fine today. I guess it's a lighter coverage, which isn't too bad, but I don't know. It's just, sorry, you might've heard my bell ring. I just had a delivery and it was my Sephora order. Do you want to see quickly what I got? I got this beauty blender. Christmas set. It's got like two sponges, a soap, and then like a cute little beauty blender or sponge holder. I should add some context to this. At the end of last week, our Sephora had a 20% off sale. <laughs> and then I got the, just a full size of the Rare Beauty mascara. So nothing, uh, you've seen that on my channel. And then I also picked up the new Fenty Beauty double cheeked up freestyle blush duo, cream blush duo for cr the Christmas one. Firstly, this packaging is absolute fire. I love this. And then that's the shades, which we're not using today, but you will see in a video, I promise. How cool is that? I'm excited. I've never tried their blush formula, their cream blush formula. And I am really, really pumped to see what it's all about. Also, is it weird that Fenty's never released powder blushes? Has Fenty got powder blushes? I don't think they do. Anyway, back to our scheduled programming. <laughs> so I think I was saying the scent and everything of this foundation it like lingers too, so I feel like if, you, if that bothers you, you probably won't like this. It doesn't look too bad on the skin. It does dry down, which is pretty good, especially because it has hyaluronic acid in it and stuff. But it's just, I don't know. 
It's a good foundation, but it's not a great foundation to me. And I definitely re like do regret picking it up because I have quite a few in my collection and I, th I feel like I just am disappointed I didn't trust my gut with this one because I just think I knew that it was just going to be okay. The great thing is it's like it's workable. So I will wear it. I will use it. It won't just sit there and go to waste and I won't need to declutter it. I don't have a color corrector that I regret buying. I don't think. So I'm just using my Bobbi Brown one. I also don't have a cream bronzer that I regret purchasing. So I'm just gonna not wear cream bronzer today. So that's exciting. I really, the less categories I have, of makeup that I regret purchasing the better because honestly I buy all this with my own money so I don't I want these products to dang work for me now this is the part the next two steps are the parts where I'm like this might go horribly wrong for me and it's concealer so I have two concealers that I deeply regret purchasing the first one is the NARS radiant creamy concealer I knew all along that this probably wasn't gonna work for me and I bought it anyway and I was right <laughs> it's just doesn't do anything for me. It just doesn't do anything for me. I need to caveat this with you guys. I mean, you've heard me spiel about this for a very long time, but I have terrible under eyes. They're textured, they're dry, they're aging, they've got darkness, they've got pigmentation. You can kind of see here, I look like I've kind of been punched in the face a little bit. Like they are difficult under eyes, you guys. And after about an hour or two, depending on the products I'm wearing, I can look real tired real quick and real dry and crepey. So, you know, it's it's all about the products that I use. The other concealer that I really am just like, again, I kind of knew this wasn't going to work for me. And I picked it up anyway because I was like, oh, I'll do a review. But like, and I know, I, I guess that's where it comes into play as well. Some of these, it's like, if it doesn't work for me, sometimes that's still beneficial to you guys. Because if any of you are like, oh my gosh, I feel like I vibe with you so much on your under eye concealer and your under eye journey. And if I pick up a concealer that you were considering like something popular like this one and it doesn't work for me, then you might be able to save your coins, which is kind of the purpose as well. Apart from just good old fashioned makeup fun, the purpose is also to help you make really good purchasing decisions. I think, hopefully I help with that. Anyway, the next one is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer. This is just, I think if you have really good under eyes, it'll probably work for you. I think if you have under eyes that maybe don't have a lot of darkness, it'll probably work for you. There will definitely be people that love this concealer and I know so many people love it, but just for me and my type of under eyes, it just doesn't work for me. And I kind of knew that going in and I still picked it up anyway. So anyway, let's use both of these because this one is in the shade Madeline. It's way too dark for me. So, which isn't the reason why I dislike it. It's just, I find NARS's concealer shade ranges, I just don't have a shade. It's either way, 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 way too light or way, 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 way too dark. And this one is in the shade four and this should be able to like, together they should make a pretty good shade. Normally I blend it out with a, sp uh, a brush, but I'm just gonna actually blend it out with a sponge today because I've been doing that the last couple of days and I've loved it. I find I go through phases with these things. The Radiant Creamy Concealer, I just didn't find it offered any coverage at all. I found that it like wore away really quickly. I just didn't find it was good for me. And then the Charlotte Tilbury one, I have a full review of it up on my channel. And you can see like I, this is 4K, no filters, no nothing. And I zoomed in so close. And you could see even by the end of the um, makeup application in that video, <laughs> the concealer had like broken up. It was like, wearing away settling really bad in fine lines like it just it was not good and so many of you actually commented and was like wow you can actually see what you are talking about here let's set the under eyes and i i feel like if anything's going to ruin my entire makeup right now it's going to be these two like this step of powder so uh the powder i regret picking up is this one the charlotte tilbury airbrush brightening it's so stark white that when i put it on my under eyes it makes them look gray and it doesn't brighten. It also doesn't make the texture of my under eyes look smoothing, doesn't prolong any wear time, doesn't do any of that. Let's just go ahead and dip on in. This is a Delium Tool 787. And again, some people will really like this, but for me personally, I just don't think it looks great. And it will look good now, but it's like as it wears, it. I don't know it just doesn't wear well 
it's just not the vibe for me. The other powder is this Wayne Goss Weightless Powder. I went into this with such high hopes, such high hopes, because it's Wayne Goss. I, I learned how to do my complexion makeup from him when I was 18 years old. I watched his YouTube videos and I learned how to contour and all that from him. So when he was releasing complexion products, I was like, yes, but I was like, I just can't get this powder to work for me. It, it initially kind of goes on okay, but it just doesn't have any longevity to it, I personally find. I think if you have really, really dry skin, you'll probably actually really like this powder. But I think if you're like me and you have, you know, normal combo, probably more combo up skin, I just, I just don't find there's any longevity to this. I also find, I don't know how anyone deeper than me would be able to use this because even though it's supposed to have no color in it at all, I personally find it leaves a white cast on my skin, let alone someone who's deeper. So if you have this in your deeper shade, let us know in the comments down below what you think and how you find it on your skin. The amount of powder I need to use, especially my T-zone to like really blur and smooth and everything, it then leaves a white cast and I don't know. It's just, yeah, I regret picking it up for sure. I've got. Um, other powders in my collection. This is a BK 104 by the way. I can't really use a powder puff with this because so you can see the white. If I use the powder puff it packs on too much powder. I'm just gonna leave this here because honestly building this up it just makes me look paler and paler. Let's talk about bronzer for a second. Um, the bronzer that I hands down regret picking up. I knew I was going to regret picking this up. I knew it wasn't a product for me, but I just couldn't go past the packaging and I really wanted to like it. And it is the one size made for shade bronzer trio. It just, I just, I was like, why do I need three of these shades? First of all, one should have been a cream like the blushes. I still stand by that. But two, I just find this formula overly pigmented, a little bit patchy. It's just quite hard to finesse on the skin, I personally find. And I just have bronzers that are in, like truly be out of this world impeccable. So for me, I never reach for this. I can absolutely see this getting decluttered at some point. I'm just going to go into the lightest shade to begin with. It's just not... I don't personally find it to be a super great product. Now that's nothing against Patrick Star or One Size because I love their concealer. Their concealer is amazing. But this for me is not it. But also, you know, maybe I'm not the target audience for this. But there are people that really like super pigmented products, you know, and I'm just not one of them. So maybe that's, if you're someone that really likes super pigmented products, I think like Teresa is dead, for example. I think she liked this, didn't she? Um, because she likes quite pigmented products, so I could be wrong about that though. Anyway, yeah, it's just not a bronzer for me. I honestly never reach for this. I have zero brow products that I regret buying, so let me just quickly go off camera and do my brows, so two seconds. Brows are on, and before I go and do anything else, I actually want to do my lip. So I'm just going to use my Pat McGrath Labs Contour Lip Liner. I don't regret buying this. I just don't have a lip liner that I do regret buying. The lipstick that I do regret buying, had I thought about this for even 30 more seconds before actually just caving to Andrea Ali generally, um, <laughs> I would have not picked this up. And it is the Dior Rouge Forever like transfer proof lipsticks. So this is the shade 100. Now the packaging is incredible. And I wasn't going to pick this up because originally I was like, mm, I don't really like matte liquid lips. So I feel like this is probably just a bullet lipstick version of that. I probably won't like it. And I saw Andrea Ali use them in a video and I was like, mm, I feel like I need them now because she's amazing. And uh, yeah, I picked one up and I regret it because I, I don't like this and I'm never going to wear it. So let's put it on for today. I have used this in a video already where I talked about why I didn't like it and it's a lovely shape like I really really like the shade of it all of that is is lovely but it is drying on the lips I find it's sticky feeling like it doesn't feel like it fully dries down it kind of stays a little bit sticky all day and I don't personally think I have like wrinkly butthole lips but this gives me wrinkly butthole lips so I regret buying it. It was an expensive lipstick. I could have bought another Charlotte Tilbury one, another Givenchy one, another Hermes one. Let's talk about highlighter. The highlighter that I regret picking up is this one. This is the Dior Backstage Highlighter Palette. This is going to offend so many of you and I'm so sorry. I just don't get a lot of use out of this. 
I really don't. When I first picked it up in like 2020, I raved about it. I was like, this is the best. I love it, blah, blah, blah. But it was also like one of the only highlights I had in my collection. And then as I've added more and more highlights, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I super, super love this. But again, it does look lovely on the skin. I just don't know why. I just don't super gravitate towards it. Anyway, and I'm also never going to use this shade. So I just, I need to stop buying palettes where there's any shade in it that I'm not going to use. You know what I mean? Let's go into this gold shade first, though. This is just a BH Cosmetics Rose Quartz Brush. I don't have a liquid highlighter that I regret buying. Well, actually, I do, but it's a secret for now. I mean, it looks very blingy. It's just a little bit texturizing on the skin. I just have other formulas that look more smooth and natural on the skin, that's all. But it is beautiful, and I know a lot of you love it. So, you know, again, I'm not coming for you. If you love it, I'm so happy for you. It's just, I regret purchasing it personally. Blushes, all right. I'm not coming for one size, I swear, but damn, I regret buying these. I regret buying these so hard and I regret buying two, that's for sure. I knew I wanted, I mean, firstly, the packaging suckered me in straight away. I was always gonna buy one because of the packaging. Like, I'm just that kind of a person, okay? Don't come for me. But I was over in America and we couldn't get these in Australia, especially at the time. So as soon as I saw them, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get two. I'm just gonna get two. I'm sure I'll like them. And I shouldn't have, but anyway. Um, so I got, uh, this one is very that, which is kind of like a neutral-ish type pink color. It is quite pretty. And then this one is Freaky Peach. And they're both quite pretty to look at. It's just that I don't like the formulas in here. So the cream blushes are okay. They're probably for me the better formula, but they are a little bit, you just need to be a bit mindful of how you use them. All three of these are extremely, extremely pigmented. So again, if you're someone like me who likes soft, buildable pigments and soft buildable blushes then it's I'm automatically not gonna like it um, I just find that the matte blushes in the middle are way too pigmented for me like I just have I don't know I just find them so finicky to use I just don't ever want to like casually reach for them and then these blush topper shades I don't know if it's it honestly might just be a very me thing but these are just such straight metallic highlighters that they're supposed to be blush toppers but I'm like who is using them as blushes? Like, and again, there could be all of you doing it and it's just a me thing and that's okay. But yeah, for me, this is just not my preference of style. So I think I'll go into um, very that today. I think I'll take it on my sponge, the cream blush. So I'm just dipping into the pan directly with the sponge and then I'll just tap the excess off on the back of my hand here. And then <laughs> gently. There we go. They're not terrible, I will say. I've had worse formulas, I really have. They're just, yeah, I do regret buying them, especially buying two of them. And then I will just pick up a little bit of the matte blush. And this is where you need to be like super careful because they're just going with the lightest of light touches. So that looks lovely today, but I've had a lot of experience of like how I like to work with this formula, but I have to think about it so hard. Like it's not something that like if I'm in a rush to get ready for work in the morning or something, I'm not going to pick that product to use. I don't have an eye primer that I regret buying, so I'm just going to quickly put some of my Rare Beauty eye primer on. I feel like a lot of you are going to get this. Are either going to be shocked, but I actually feel like a lot of you are just going to be like, yes, yes, when I show you this. So the palette that I regret purchasing, and I really went out of my way to purchase this, let me tell you. I really went out of my way. So it's the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 1 palette, which is the more neutral one. So when I went to America at the start of the year, Major Dimensions 2 had just gotten released, and I'd actually been wanting this one for ages, but it had just sold out instantly in Sephora Australia and never been restocked. So I, when I was away in America, I was looking for this everywhere sold out everywhere, got Major Dimensions too. cool, really liked that. I was like, okay, cool, I'll get the first one. So my girl Patty in America, she lives in America, she ordered it off the Patrick Tar website for me, shipped it to her house, and then she shipped it to me. So I paid like, I think it would have been a hundred and, 
maybe 50 Australian dollars for this palette when it's normally like a hundred or something, maybe even more than that. It might even have been nearly, yeah, just because of shipping and all that stuff. So like I went out of my way to pick this up and it's not bad quality. It's just that I really did not need it. I really don't reach for it a whole lot because over like say Bieber, I like Bieber a little bit more. I have other neutral palettes in my collection that I like a bit more. I find these metallics while beautiful are not as amazing and mesmerizing as other metallics from from brands that I have in my collection. Like it is a good palette, don't get me wrong. And if you're someone that just wants like a very basic neutral color story and that's all you want, then this is a great palette. But in my collection of eyeshadow palettes, it just gets completely lost. So anyway, let's create a look with it today and give it some love because it definitely, it really needs to be used and loved. I'm just gonna dip into this shade first. This is an A503 from BK Beauty. And then I'm actually going to dip into the next shade here, which you would think I would get a lot of use out of this shade because this is the kind of shade that I use all the time. Like if you look at most of my palettes, the shade that gets hit pan on is like this kind of a shade right here. But um, I don't know, I guess because I have so many other palettes that are impeccable, it really does just get lost. But it is beautiful. Like the mattes are a lovely matte formula. I will give an honorable mention as well to the Melt Cosmetics Gemini 2 palette. I don't know why I picked that up. I really don't. I mean, I know why I really wanted to try Melt Cosmetics, but that's a color story that I'm also probably not gonna get a lot of use out of. Gemini 1 I don't regret because I love that color story, but Gemini 2 I'm like, mm. and especially because the metallics in it are just crappy in my opinion. Sorry, Melt. Now we're gonna go into a refer number 14 and I'm gonna do a mix of these two shades right here. Just deepening the crease up a little bit. Nothing crazy today. Just a really wearable look in my opinion. I'm also genuinely surprised at how good this look is turning out because I really don't like those concealers or those pearls, but so far they're pulling together. I'm just dipping into the transition shade here too with the Delium Tools Triple Seven Shader Brush for the lower lash line here. Pat McGrath Labs Intensify Stick. Absolutely no way do I regret purchasing this. I already have a backup in my collection because I cannot be without it. I'm gonna go into this peach shade right here. This is a refer number 28, by the way. Just gonna tap this on the lids. See, like this is pretty and very wearable. Again, like very like office friendly type palette, very neutral soft glam type palette, but Compared to like Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath, the metallics in here are just not that special. Now, normally that wouldn't bother me, but the price point of this palette is quite high. Like it's, I think it's higher or the same cost as Natasha Denona off the top of my head. And I just think that Natasha is offering something a little bit more unique and special than this particular palette for this price point. I do actually have a mascara that I regret picking up and it's this NARS Climax Extreme. I had a mini of this, loved it, loved it. And so I was like, absolutely, I'm picking out this large one. But since I've picked up this large one, I don't know if the formula is different or what, but this flakes, it flakes. So I really regret picking this up because it flakes. I also picked it up at a point where I really didn't need to buy any mascaras and I should have just waited until I finished a heap. And then I would have discovered the Lancome Lashy Doll in that time frame and been like, I don't need this, you know? So I guess a combination of it flakes on me, which very rarely happens for mascaras for me, and I really didn't need it. So I'm just gonna quickly go put my hair on. I suffer from hair loss, if you don't know, and wear alternative hair, and then uh, come back and show you guys what this all looks like zoomed back a little bit, so two seconds. All right, what do you guys think? I have to admit, I did just put a little bit of my MAC Studio Fix powder in the center of my T-zone just because I do need this makeup to actually last me through my meetings. Um, look, I've got to be honest, the makeup looks really good. It really does. Uh, it Does it change my feelings on whether or not I regret purchasing these products? Nope. <laughs> nope. 
because I have other makeup products that I think look even more amazing. I think the biggest regrets out of that whole lot, if I'm honest, is the two concealers and the two powders. They are my biggest regrets. And I think out of this whole face, they're the things like the two steps that actually looked the worst out of this whole thing. Like the actual lip product is great quality. It's just not how I like a more satin, glossy, balmy type lip. The eyeshadow palette is beautiful. It's just that it gets lost in my collection. Um, the bronzer and the blushes, I can make them work. I just regret buying them because I have so many impeccable blushes and bronzers and I kind of felt like that was going to be the case. So I kind of knew that I probably wasn't going to super love or need just in general, those products because of the three formulas and blah, blah, blah. But I purchased them anyway. So yeah, some of these products are regrets because they're fails to me and some of them are just like, you knew better. You didn't really need this. You know what I mean? Anyway, let me know what you guys think. What are some products that you regret picking up personally? That you're like, if I could just redo my time, I probably wouldn't spend my money on that. That is the end of the video. If you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, pretty please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps my channel out so, so much. And we are trying to get to 10K by the end of the year, you guys. We are trying. Anyway, uh, I hope that you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.